for the first time and hopefully not the last time in history, we had an opportunity to see the Libertarian Party on the national and even international stage as CNN hosted the Libertarian Town Hall. It ran about 75 minutes long and was hosted by Chris Cuomo. By the way, I found uh, the full version of the town hall. In case you missed it, it is linked below in the description section. So I'm going to go over the cliff notes of what transpired. I probably won't cover everything. And then I will give my thoughts regarding how Johnson and Weld performed during the town hall at the very end of this video. And you're welcome to chime in with your review, your opinion regarding how Gary Johnson and Bill Weld fared at the Libertarian Town Hall below in the comment section. So, first off, let me go over some positives. The fact that CNN actually let the Libertarian Party have 75 minutes worth of time is Pretty freaking awesome. Now, I realize CNN isn't what it used to be. It used to be like the number one cable news source. It's seen better days because you got Fox News out there. You got MSNBC, other networks as well. But at the same time, still, there's a pretty decent audience. And a lot of them may have never even had an opportunity to check out the libertarian candidates, Gary Johnson or Bill Weld, until last night. And not just at the national level, but also internationally because it was being carried all over the world. I thought the uh, entire town hall was very professional. There was definitely some hard-hitting questions. And like I mentioned, there was time allotted for the Libertarian candidates, which was about 75 minutes in length. And what was interesting, like whenever I looked it up, it was only supposed to go to like uh, 9 o'clock Central Time, but it went on an extra 15 minutes. So once again, props to Chris Cuomo and CNN for allowing Gary Johnson and Bill Well the opportunity to do this town hall. Now, one thing that I will say about Gary Johnson and Well that separates them from Trump and Hillary, well, there's a lot of things. But when you're looking for, like, qualifications to be president, you want a little bit of experience. Well, Johnson and Weld were both former governors. So they have that executive experience that Hillary and Trump lack. Plus, I think they're the more logical choice. But let's get into you know, what exactly transpired in the town hall. Now, there were 12 major issues covered, asked by uh, Cuomo and even audience members. Now, the audience, according to Cuomo, consisted of Democrats, Republicans, and independents who had one thing in common. They would not vote for Hillary or Trump. And this is something that Cuomo said, you know, who is less is worse, you know, they, they can't really decide which candidate between those two is the better choice because really there isn't one. They both have all-time high negatives when you go by the polls across the country. The majority, I don't think, really want either one of them to be in the White House. So this is a big opportunity in 2016 for an alternative to the Republicans and the Democrats. And the only you know logical choice is the Libertarian Party because the Libertarian Party is on the ballot in almost 50 states. They have the potential to get enough electoral votes in order to win the White House in November. Plus, they are the third largest political party in the country. Now, the issues that were covered included the Second Amendment, gun control, watch lists, health care, pro-life versus pro-choice, immigration, drug legalization, we'll touch on that in just a minute, the military slash war on terror, wasteful spending when it comes to defense, uh, them hurting or helping the Trump and Hillary campaigns, are they being a spoiler? And that's unfortunately something that's asked a lot about people who like to try and belittle the Libertarian Party. They just come out and say, well, a vote for you is going to be a vote for Hillary or for Trump, so why should I even bother? It's the same song and dance that the Republicans and Democrats have played for years and decades in order to stay in power. They say, nope, you can't vote for a third party because you vote for a third party. They're going to lose, and you're just going to help this guy or that guy win the Republican or Democrat. But at the same time, if enough people got sick and tired of the Republicans and the Democrats and decided to go third party and vote Libertarian at the local level, state level, and federal level, you would start to see some real changes. You would start to see Libertarians actually elected to office. Maybe not at first, but if people stuck with it 
and kept supporting another party, another choice, and eventually you would see a positive results from support instead of playing the whole song and dance of, oh, I got to vote Democrats or oh, I got to vote Republicans because one of them's going to win. Well, they don't have to. They keep screwing us over. So why waste your time, your money, or your vote whenever they always screw us over? It doesn't matter if they're Republican or Democrat. So other things that were brought up issue-wise included free trade, generating jobs, federal consumption tax, which is what Gary Johnson wants to replace income and uh, corporate tax with. You had uh, Johnson and Weld talking about their libertarian history, even though they both were Republicans in quote-unquote blue states, on why they both believe that they've been libertarian all this time. And there's some truth to what they both said, because they both had libertarian ideas even back when they were governors. But at the same time, you know, you could debate that issue. Then, of course, they talked about uh, Black Lives Matter, the greatest challenge is facing the next president, their beliefs in God, who is Gary Johnson, what is the Libertarian Party. So those are the major issues that were covered. A lot of them were actually brought up by audience members, including a uh, survivor of the uh, Pulse nightclub mass shooting, that terrorist attack that took place a few weeks ago in Orlando. And, uh, you know, she said she was a you know, believer in the Second Amendment and she even owned a firearm. But at the same time, you know, her concern was around, you know, shouldn't we have some sort of insurance when it comes to gun ownership or, you know, the ability to, you know, make sure that, you know, the wrong people aren't able to buy firearms. And I understand that issue as a gun owner. I get that. I mean, it's, it's a very touchy subject. And I don't know. It's just something that the problem is people are not willing to sit down and talk. You have the gun control advocates always rallying for more control. Then, of course, you have everyone on the other side that are going to not want to give an inch because they're legitimately afraid that if you give the other side an inch, they'll take a mile. So the problem is not willing to come together and you know actually hammer out differences. And that is pretty much why you can explain the mentalities of the Democrats and the Republicans. They're always going to their extremes, extreme right, extreme left. It's getting worse and worse. There's more divisiveness, and they're basically ripping the country apart. What the Libertarian Party offers is a means to actually start unifying people once again, to start pre bringing people back together to meet in the middle and actually try and work out these issues. Now, let's see. Oh, yeah, drug legalization. Okay, that was a very, very hot topic because you had a woman whose uh, son did apparently one line of really bad heroin. And according to her, it was the only time he ever did heroin. I don't know if that's true, but it does seem like a very odd if that was the very first time he's had heroin and it caused this massive issue, serious health problems. And she was like, how can you justify drug legalization when – you know, this has happened to my son and other people's sons and daughters. And, you know, Gary Johnson is very adamant about pro-legalization when it comes to marijuana. He doesn't necessarily feel the same way about other recreational drugs, even though, you know, that is not exactly the libertarian point of view. And I felt like he was trying to pander. He was trying to show sympathy. But at the same time, I felt like he did a terrible job trying to make the case. He did, you know, point out some other countries that have had some success with their programs. But at the same time, I really wish people would use history as an example to why illegal drugs makes no sense. Now, my point is alcohol prohibition. When they made alcohol illegal, that didn't stop people from consuming alcohol. It only led to the black market, to speakeasies, to rum running, moonshining, the rise of criminal organizations that thrived off illegal booze. And another issue that came up, very similar to what happened to this woman's son, is the fact that you know a lot of people couldn't get the imported stuff from Canada or Mexico or throughout the rest of the world that was being you know smuggled into the U.S. So there was a lot of uh, like wood alcohol type uh, beverages being made, very questionable, and that caused some serious uh, issues to people that consumed those particular alcoholic beverages because there was no regulation, there was no system in place to make sure that you know we we they had no idea what the hell was going into that particular type of alcohol that was being consumed. The same thing with uh, heroin and any other illegal drug. The problem is it's not going to go away. You can't win the war on drugs, just like you can't win the war on prostitution. The only thing you can do is hope to you know legalize it, tax it, and I know the scary word, regulate it. 
I mean, that's just the way it is. And that's something I really wish Gary Johnson would have done a better job of doing. And I think the problem was he was trying to pander a little too much when it came to that and other issues. Now, some issues I actually had with CNN, despite the fact they gave, you know, Gary Johnson and Bill Weld and the Libertarian Party 75 minutes worth of time, you know, this opportunity to present themselves to the people as a viable alternative to the Democrats and Republicans is this, the one word game. I thought the one word game was stupid. I've never liked the one word game when it came to previous debates. I think that you cannot really sum up anything with one word. I think you need to give the candidates at least a, a, like a sentence or a few words to describe how you feel about something. And the problem was they said that they were not going to engage in name calling. And they didn't when it came to Hillary and Obama. In fact, they surprisingly said some pretty positive things about Obama and Hillary, which was kind of a shock to me. But, you know, they were pretty um, negative when it came to Trump. Now, some of it was obviously justifiable. Bill Weld called Trump a huckster and compared, you know, his immigration policy very similar to that of Adolf Hitler's. So, yeah, they were, they were very, very anti-Trump, but it, they didn't exactly come across as anti-Hillary. And Bill Weld even talked about his uh, positive history with Hillary Clinton. In fact, this question came up from one of the members of the audience. She asked, if you had to pick between Trump and Hillary, who would you pick? Now, Gary Johnson did the right thing. He said, no, I would always vote for the Libertarian candidate, even though, you know, that's not the answer she wanted. This is another stupid question, but anyways, Bill Weld unfortunately fell for the trap. He said, I would vote for Hillary. That's a practical endorsement of Hillary Clinton, Bill Weld. I mean, I, I just, I really didn't get that. And my other issue, though, is with Bill Weld. Okay, so he did present himself, I think, a little bit better than Gary Johnson. I think he did a way better job. But at the same time, he was brought in for the name recognition, which has obviously worked, you know, because they got on the Libertarian Town Hall, and Bill Weld has been in several uh, national interviews Unfortunately, Jim Gray didn't have that opportunity back in 2012. But, you know, Bill Weld is supposed to be this campaigner, right, this fundraising guy. And they even mention it in the town hall. And at the moment, the, you know, Johnson-Weld campaign is, what, only got like a hundred-something thousand dollars in the pot. So where is Weld with this whole fundraiser going out and making the big money with his contacts? Why are they not filling up the uh, campaign coffers with money? especially since Trump has a ton of money and Hillary has a ton more money. So, honestly, in order to have an effective campaign, they need some freaking money. So, well, needs to get out there and start doing some fundraising. <laughs> All right, so here are my final thoughts regarding the CNN Town Hall that transpired last night. Once again, linked below in the description section if you want to go check it out. And feel free and let me know your opinion, your thoughts, your two cents regarding the town hall below in the comment section. All right, so I felt like that Johnson and Weld need to do a better job answering the hardball questions. Now, some people may say, oh, my God, they throw all these hard questions at them. Okay, yeah, and some of them seem like they were, you know, trap questions. But at the same time, when you're running for political office, you got to play with the pros. you got to be able to hit those hard balls. The best baseball players aren't hitting, you know, weak, friendly balls from amateur hour, you know, triple A. They're hitting pro balls. You know, those balls are coming in at 90, 100 miles an hour, and they're still getting knocked out of the park. That's something that Johnson and Weld need to do. they got to get better at answering the hard ball questions. Weld all but practically endorsed Hillary. I mean, that happened, and I don't know. I take issue with that. Uh, Johnson and Weld needed to go on the offensive when it came to the Libertarian Party being a better choice than Trump or Clinton, the Republicans or Democrats. I felt like they didn't exactly do that. The town hall wasn't a flaw, but at the same time, it wasn't exactly a grand slam. And in conclusion, Johnson and Weld are still the only legitimate alternative to Trump and Hillary coming in November. But it seemed like Weld did handle himself a little bit better than Johnson who obviously don't agree on everything, which is fine, but they have potential to appeal to a lot of voters out there. And I think if they had done a little bit better job last night, they could have appealed to even more. Now, I'm not saying they didn't, but I think they had an opportunity that might have been missed a little. They could have done a better job. I, I would say maybe a C grade when they could have got a, a B plus or maybe an A minus. That's just my two cents. But feel free and let me know below in the comment section what did you think about the Libertarian Town Hall last night. And no matter what, I'm going to say this. I support Johnson 2016, and I'm going to vote for him on Election Day because Trump and Hillary, they both suck.